Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Latin America show. My name is Enrique Gelista, and it's a pleasure for me to be tonight with all of you in this special show that we have. Well, it's a special celebration that we have in Mexico that is very important for us. That is the Day of the Dead or uh, Dia de Muertos. Uh, it's an important celebration that, well, we're going to talk about what is this. We have fantastic guests, not only about the Day of the Dead. We're going to talk a little bit more about also um, independent films and also a little bit of art. But while well, this show, we're going to have all about uh, Mexico, Latin America. Uh, and of course, we're going to talk and to tell you exactly what is the Day of the Dead. So please don't miss the show. Please invite your friends. But well... Anyway, I think so that, well, if we are celebrating the Day of the Dead, maybe I should wear an appropriate outfit for this celebration. So, hold on a sec. I think so. This is the best way to celebrate the Day of the Dead with all of you guys. So, Welcome to the Latin America show. Yes, I am Enrique Gelista. I'm the same one. Yes. And today I'm just wearing a costume regarding like a particular outfit that we have for the Katrine. So, well, it's like, welcome everyone. So, well, I would like to say thank you very much to all the people that they are supporting us and they are helping us. Uh, welcome to all the Mexicans and people across Latin America that are watching us too. And I would like to say thank you very much to the Mexican Embassy for supporting us. Thank you for Mexibrid. Thank you for the round, uh, round the world guys that, well, they were very, very friendly and they provided with some uh, videos and some images in Mexico because, well, these guys, they are just amazing and they are traveling all around the world. So you can check their website and also they have a YouTube page. First of all, I would like to invite you to share this video with all your friends, with all the people that you know, that maybe they are in love about Latin America, and, and of course, well, that they want to know more about what is the Day of the Dead? What are we celebrating the Day of the Dead? So first, uh, please give us a like in this page. Thank you very much for all the people that are like following us now, also in Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and here on Facebook, if you are subscribed, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and also you can watch all the different chapters that we have done before. So, well, I would like to introduce mis amigos, my friends, uh, Roger Alarcón. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Actually, I'm going to enjoy this show tonight. Anyway, it's called Outside and we need to talk about the Day of the Dead, Dia de Muertos. Exactly, my dear Roger. And also, well, you said that, well, we're going to talk about the Day of the Dead, we're going to talk about this Dia de Muertos that we celebrate in Mexico, but also we're going to talk about art and films and street art. So it's very interesting, the show that we have prepared for you. And we have amazing guests tonight, as every night that we have this show, because we are bringing you the best of Latin America. Uh, I would like to, as I said, we have an extraordinary uh, archaeologist and she's going to tell us a little bit more about what is the day of the dead because well sometimes it, it sounds a little bit creepy but it's not creepy it's just part of our traditions in Mexico so well I would like to say hello to um, Elizabeth Baquedano a very good friend of us so how are you Elizabeth I think you are on mute yeah no I'm not mute ah excellent Thank you, Enrique. Thank you very much for inviting me to this very interesting Latin American show, specially designed to highlight the Day of the Dead. And I know you have other guests talking about other, other things that are equally interesting, but I'm delighted to be with you sharing a Mexican tradition that is definitely Mexican. Correct. And well, uh, well, we know that while well, you are an archaeologist and you uh, also, you know, a lot about the uh, Mayan codes and well, you have been like um, interested and study a lot about our culture. So I would like to start like why these days they are important for Mexico. Well, um, it is really no exaggeration to say that the day of the dead is the most important day in the Mexican calendar. 
So it's a tradition that goes back to pre-Hispanic times, but it's definitely something that is uh, very much ingrained in our culture, is very much part of being Mexican. So um, at this time of year, I would like to start by saying how beautiful it is throughout Mexico to see all the bakeries, all the shops decorated with skulls, uh, with uh, bread of the Day of the Dead, with uh, bones and skulls and all kinds of uh, paintings and drawings everywhere, flowers, and you see a lot of Sempua Xochitl beautiful um, flowers that are not only uh, symbolic of the Day of the Dead in ancient Mexico, but today as well. So the country is dressed with flowers, with smells, with beautiful incense um, in the cemeteries. You see a great profusion of colors, of smells, and also you see um, Mexican things being brought to, um, for sale. So for example, you have mole and you have prawns, uh, you also have all kinds of sugar skulls uh, made with amaranth and, um, and joined in with honey. So you have uh, all kinds of puddings made with pumpkin, which is also a Mexican dish par excellence. So this is a happy time, it's really the opposite to a gloomy period. This is the time when the deceased come back, when the deceased are alive, when the deceased join their uh, families and come together. So you can see, for instance, I can recognize this is mixed kick people going to the cemetery um, the celebrations start around the 31st of October when the bell at the uh, bell tower tolls 12 times and this is to indicate that the children are going to be arriving on the 31st. So you see petals of marigold flowers indicating the path to their homes uh, they, they make their arrival, they go and visit their relatives. So this is very much what goes on in Mixquic. So you have a combination of both the pre-Hispanic world, the pre-Columbian traditions, together with the elements of the Catholic Church that are today important in Mexico too. So it's very much um, a join um, of forces of pre-Columbian cultures and is taking an eclectic form with pre-Columbian elements. You see skulls everywhere. And of course, when we see skulls, we always think of something spooky, but skulls are symbols of permanence. They are the most important uh, part of the head they last longer, the skull and the bones, than anything else. The rest of the body decays and falls away. Well, the skull is a reminder of the presence in life. So it really has nothing to do with death or with uh, being spooky, but it also has a connotation of permanence. It has a, a connotation of life. So uh, we see also a lot of, of bones, crossbones, and crossbones are symbolic of regeneration. So bones and skulls are seen in different contexts in ancient Mexico. But in the context of the Day of the Dead, uh, we see them as symbols of those people who were with us at some point and they come back on the 31st, from the 31st to the 2nd of November to be with us. So the children come on the 31st, they go to their homes, they find toys, they find sweets, they find their bedroom duly made with all kinds of toys that they used to play with. 
and they also find all kinds of sweets that they enjoyed while in life. So you also have to think of infant mortality being very high in ancient Mexico and today in Latin America is quite high. So it's not surprising that children had a special place during the day of the dead celebrations. But um, the children only stay with their beloved ones for 24 hours and they depart on the 1st of November when the bell tolls again to indicate that the deceased will be coming back. The grown-ups, the adults, will be coming to visit their relatives. So people prepare beautiful altars decorated with all kinds of photographs of the deceased. Of course, the patron saint is always brought as well. There's a beautiful tablecloth where everything is prepared and everything is organized. You have candles. You also have a lovely um, um, incense. So incense is always a way of communicating with ancestors. So the smoke goes up and it communicates with what is above. This is in, in ancient Mexico, but also the incense has a purification connotation, even though many people don't do it with those reasons. But it is very important that incense has this um, idea of purification, of cleanliness. It also has a, a way of communicating because the smoke goes up. So to see a copal incense in uh, braziers, to see candles, and you see all kinds of fruits of the season. You see pumpkins. You also see uh, donuts, pink donuts, which seem to be uh, called Goyetes. So these goyetes are part of the decoration of the Day of the Dead. They are beautifully uh, decorated and put together with pumpkin, uh, with uh, sometimes pudding made of uh, pumpkin with molasses to make it sweet. Uh, you also find bottles of tequila or bottles of beer to welcome the deceased who enjoyed a good glass of tequila or a good beer while he was alive. And of course that is ready for him. If he smoke, there will be cigarettes uh, for him or for her to have a cigarette. And those are the goyetes, the, the pink donuts that you see. And you see uh, the, the skulls made of amaranth. So amaranth was a very important, is a very important um, seed that is very rich in proteins. And of course, by having it toasted and mixed together with honey, it produces a very tasty flavor. And of course, it produces a very beautiful oil and it can be cooked, the leaves can be cooked. So um, these are pre-Columbian um, vegetables that are used for the Day of the Dead. So imagine the amaranth growing in purple colors in the field. So you see tall um, vegetables or bush-like um, uh, trees that have that purple color, which is the amaranth. So um, Mixkik is on Lake Chalco, so you have to think of the importance of dugout canoes, people bringing their offerings into um, canoes, so the canoes are decorated as well. So it, it is not just um, the altars, the domestic altars at people's places, but also in the lake area. So the, all throughout the Chinampaneca region, the lake system in, in the south of Mexico is beautiful, where you have candles and you see flowers. And so Liz, you also... Liz, one question regarding to that one, because, well, it's just because of the audience that they will know a little bit more about where is located Mixquic. So it's in the center, it's, in, it's, it's very oh, yes. near to okay. Mexico City. It's... it's uh, 
Mixquic is a suburb of Mexico City, is in the south of Mexico City. It belongs to what is called Delegación Tláhuac in the south. So Xochimilco is very well known to tourists, uh, the so-called floating gardens, but this actually is further up and it joins with different areas called the Chinampaneca, so all the regions by the lake that are very fertile with all kinds of crops uh, being uh, produced or, or where you actually see beautiful crops of maize. And at the moment in Mexico City, these areas are used for the cultivation of poinsettias. So uh, it's all to do with Christmas. And this is a very rich area for the uh, produce of poinsettias for Christmas. And the poinsettia is a Mexican plant. So imagine what Christmas could be like without poinsettias or without turkey and all these beautiful products come from Mexico. So going back to Mixquic, Mixquic is perhaps one of the most important places for the celebrations of the Day of the Dead, not only um, today, but also in pre-Columbian times. The uh, cloister, which is a 16th century church, a beautiful Augustinian church in Mexico City, in, in the south, uh, you have lots of representations of death. So there are some skulls that had been penned onto the walls and they were part of the pre-Columbian precinct. But today you see adjacent to uh, the graveyard, you have the, the cloister with all these beautiful offerings that the priests normally places. Uh, there's a little tiny museum with all the products that people have found and bring to the local museum. So it is a, a, it is a lovely place. I, I can't think of anywhere else that is more lively. Um, everything smells of food. Everything is tastefully done. Uh, people walk uh, dressed as skeletons. And um, so I, I really strongly recommend that. But the, Mexico is full of this tradition. So if you go, for example, to Janitzio, uh, to the, what is the modern state of Michoacán today, um, there's a, a lake there where you find also a beautiful uh, reference to the Day of the Dead. And it is all by the lake with the beautiful um, hunting nets that, that, not hunting, fishing nets that they, they have. So there, there's a lot to, that we can say uh, about that, but I, I've been talking and I, I haven't given you a chance to ask me questions, uh, Enrique, I don't know. Um, no, Liz, actually it's like, I think so that, well, you are very well organized on, and you are telling us the complete story about this, that I think so that's the main thing that our audience, they would like to, to know and to understand because, well, it's like, it's not, and I, I just want to split this part because, well, there is no comparison with what uh, Halloween means in other cultures, because for us, it's more remembering uh, our, our ancestors. And of course, that we are like enjoying that time with, they, with them. It's not, as you were saying, it's not a spooky day or something. It's more like we are gathering with them. And in that way, it's like, we have different symbols in the altars and, uh, and and we have seen these altars that we have and we have like for example dogs sugar skulls uh, the marigold and what are the the different things that they are offering and and what are like the, the main highlights that people they normally put in an altar a part of the incense that you told us before yes well um it, it really um varies but every domestic offering has the photograph of the deceased or the members of the family that they are remembering. Um, there are also, uh, sometimes you, you mentioned dogs, but dogs are really important. In ancient Mexico, uh, when somebody died, the company of a dog was required to, uh, to accompany the deceased to the journey to afterlife. 
So dogs are good swimmers, so they help the disease to uh, cross the aquatic regions, the rivers and so on, to make it to the final resting place. So according to um, the ancient Mexican belief, there were three main paradises or three main places where the disease, the souls of the dead, went to. The Mictlan was the least attractive of all these three places. Mictlan was the cold region of the dead, uh, where there was a big um, chimney without um, an opening, so it was a place where people were asphyxiated, they ate the leftovers of the earth, so this was not a very attractive place to go to. But there were two other places that were a lot more interesting. Um, the second place would be the Tlalocan or the paradise of the god of rain. So if we think of Mexico having two main seasons, the dry season and the uh, rainy season, so the importance of aquatic products, the uh, presence of water to cultivate the land, to make the crops grow is, is really a good place. But if you think of a lake in, in Texcoco or in, in Xochimilco, in the lake region, many people died while they were fishing or they were going on about their daily activities. So to have a paradise that offered a good reward while working was a very pleasant destiny. So those who also suffer from gout or from water-related diseases like hydropsy, went to this particular region, to this particular paradise. So um, this was a place uh, of the plenty where everything was uh, in abundance. People were happy, surrounded by butterflies, by birds. People were uh, in, in a sp perpetual springtime. Uh, playing, having a good time. So the other place was the paradise of those who died in the battlefield for warriors or for women who died giving birth. So there were, we could say that there were three main paradises, but what this tells us is that the state promoted people to work. The more they work, the better their afterlife. So if somebody went to the battlefield and died, if he, if he was wounded and died in, in battle, he went to a very good paradise with the God of the sun. He went to the Tonatiu Ilwikak, the paradise of the sun. He was surrounded by butterflies. So we see a lot of butterflies and butterfly symbolism. White butterflies symbolize the souls of the children who died uh, very young, so white butterflies. But sometimes we see butterflies of other colors and they're also the souls of the grown-ups. So you have uh, different ideas, different birds. You have lots of hummingbirds and the hummingbird is a symbol of a warlike little bird that is very territorial that fights when someone goes into its territory. So it's a territorial bird that feeds on um, dead insects. So this, um, I could talk about the importance of warfare, but of course, everybody knows that the Aztecs were people who, who really uh, produced a lot of, of war and were great warriors, very skillful warriors and people died in the battlefield. So uh, the women who were also giving birth constantly, and I mentioned earlier that infant mortality is very high, women were dying while giving birth. So those women who died were equated to warriors who had been fighting a battle, fighting for a new life, for a new warrior for the state to be brought. And when she died, she went 
to the same paradise, to the Tornatu Ilguicac, to reside with the paradise, to the warm region where everything was also uh, very pleasant and very attractive. But you could actually come back after four years uh, so there was a liminal state where you could come and greet your beloved ones in the form of a hummingbird. So when you see hummingbirds in Mexico, and of course there are over 43 species of hummingbirds in Mexico. So you can see all these beautiful hummingbirds and think of, oh, these are the souls of the warriors who died in the battlefield. And they are just beautiful creatures to, to admire. But they also have that wonderful uh, connotation of uh, bellicosity and uh, creatures that can do wonderful things. They can fly, they can hover, they can go backwards and forwards, they can uh, fly for about 500 uh, kilometers without stopping. So they eat insects and they have protein to fly. They um, suck the nectar of flowers and, and they get that energy with the nectar of flowers and so on. So we have, a, really, we have a very vast subject and I know you have other guests, but um, I don't want to, to overdo it. But one thing I want to say is that um, in the UK, where I live in London, uh, the, there is now this tradition of the Day of the Dead, and um, we have seen a lot of altars in, in the UK, throughout the UK, and um, Dying Matters, which is a great organization in the UK, introduced the Day of the Dead as something that is healthy. It's good to talk about death. It's not anything to be frightened of. Uh, the Mexicans die of hunger, die of laughter, die of um, desire to see their beloved ones. So Octavio Paz, Mexico's greatest poet and Nobel Prize said, the Mexicans are really married to, to death. So we enjoy um, death, but as as another way of, of life. There is transformation when we go in the earth and we transform into something else. So let's celebrate this wonderful tradition and, and let's remember those who this year very sadly died with this terrible pandemic. It's probably a, a good moment to remember that um, many people died, but they will come back and they will be uh, remembered, reunited with their loved ones. And if you are in Mexico, the Frida Kahlo Museum, the Dolores Olmedo Museum, and many museums in Mexico, the Museum of Anthropology, uh, the Museum of Modern Art, are full of, of death and activities and joyful things to celebrate two days in the calendar, perhaps even more important than Christmas itself in general. Um, especially what in the US people say, the back country. So- And, and, and one thing, uh, Elizabeth, one question, because while you were mentioning these museums and everything, and what, why Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera? Because, well, I think so they are very, very well known here. And also there are a lot of people that are fan of, of Frida Kahlo in particular. But why in this season, these two museums, they are like getting very important for this celebration? What is the reason? Well, um, Diego Rivera was a great admirer of ancient Mexico. Not only a great admirer, but he was very knowledgeable of um, Mexican culture. So he, in his mural paintings, he actually had the Day of the Dead as one of the important motifs that, that he painted. He knew about death. Uh, you can see codices painted uh, at the National Palace. So he promoted Mexican-ness. He, so here we have a great Katrina, 
you know, one of these Porphyrian ladies being ridiculized by um, by being dressed as as uh, Katrina, so they are dead, but they're elegant Porphyrian ladies with uh, furs, with feathers, and there is uh, Frida and and Diego. So uh, Frida is next to the Katrina and Diego as a young boy. And uh, we, we can actually see these paintings in, in mural paintings. So Diego collected a great amount of pre-Columbian objects. There are over 60,000 archaeological objects in the Anahuacali Museum. He spent all the money that he made in his paintings buying pre-Columbian sculptures, pre-Columbian figurines, particularly from West Mexico. And Frida was crazy about that too. So these museums, these two museums, celebrate big time the Day of the Dead. Uh, so they, they knew about Mexican traditions, they knew about ancient Mexico, and they wanted to celebrate it like we are doing now. Also, I think so that, well, if we are uh, talking about uh, La de Catrina and everything, also, I think it's a good time to mention also Jose Guadalupe Posada, no? Yes, absolutely. Well, um, Jose Guadalupe Posada was a, a Mexican artist, a great engraver who popularized the Catrinas and who actually had wonderful drawings drawings and caricatures of death. So uh, politicians, uh, people of um, importance um, in, 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 in the political world were also uh, made or turned into caricatures by Guadalupe Posada. And we see uh, lovely people on their bikes and, and so on. So there's there's a lot uh, to do with, with death, and um, there is not a single Mexican artist who has not worked on the subject of death. But I think it's now becoming sort of universal because we see skulls as um, nice motifs worn by young people and um, old people. Um, it is, you know, death is, you, it's a good subject as well. And um, especially when we think of uh, life, all the, the life symbols that they embody as well. Well, actually, I think so. it's, it's, it's just very exciting. And, and well, there are a lot of things that we can talk about. Uh, Katrina, the Day of the Dead. It has been like I I always enjoy the conversations that well I have been I have had the opportunity to listen to uh, Elizabeth many times talking about different topics about Mexico and it's just sensational. And are you uh, are you having uh, because I know that while well, you are providing also workshops and everything is so many workshop coming uh, Elizabeth where you are going to participate or something that people maybe they should know where they can know more about you? Yes, well, I, I, will be, I, I will be doing something with University College with the Bloomsbury Summer School. Um, it won't be summer, it will be um, uh, uh, all the Mexican culture. So it is called Bloomsbury summer school and is part of University College London and I will be uh, doing a joint um, lecture for Casa Latino Americana as well and I will be doing several um, lectures that I can I can tell you about online and of course I'm, I'm teaching online these days but um, I will be doing the Nahuatl study day that I organize at University College and that's open to everybody next month. Uh, the date has not been finalized but it will be at the end of November 
where we go to the ancient yeah, language spoken by, by the Aztecs. I can see um, Stephanie. Well, it's, it's my time as I see Stephanie to thank <laughs> the Mexican embassy. We have a, a wonderful, and we have a wonderful cultural attaché in front of us, Stephanie Black Leon, who has invited me every year to, to give lectures. Last year it was in Camden Town, uh, where there was some by UNAM UK. They, that was a beautiful offering that UNAM UK put and many other offerings. Uh, the Mexican embassy had a wonderful offering in Camden Town. Uh, so um, it's, it's great to be doing this in partnership with the Mexican embassy. The Mexican embassy invited me to do uh, a lecture online and, um, and then we thought that perhaps it was a good thing to join forces with the Latin American show. I thought that maybe we can have a recording and put it in, in the Mexican um, embassy uh, website, but she will tell us about that. I, I want to thank Enrique very much for inviting me, for providing us with beautiful images of the Day of the Dead and for the team that works with you. I know several people who, who work with you, you are the heart. I want to thank Stephanie Black for inviting me year after year uh, to take part in, in the celebrations of the day of the dead. Thank you very much, you. Uh, Elizabeth. It's a pleasure. Steph, uh, well, as, as, as Elizabeth said, from the Mexican Embassy as a cultural attache, so please. Thank you so much, uh, first, Dr. Baquedano, for, for that marvelous uh, lecture. Thank you, Enrique. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Whitney, for, for the invitation to, to join forces. Uh, that's what uh, it's always about. Um, so it, it facilitated uh, Elizabeth, so we didn't make her uh, do twice in a week the same talk. And we benefit in the Mexican community and the British audience curious about Mexico benefits from this. Um, so as, as it was said here, uh, the Mexican embassies uh, this year to, to celebrate safely, uh, but to make sure uh, that we mark the occasion, we created a digital platform um, and the website, it's in Spanish, uh, and that is uh, diademuertos.uk. That's the website. Thank you so much. Um, and it, the digital festival runs from October the 26th till actually November the 5th, uh, we, we changed the date, and it includes more than 30 uh, activities. Um, uh, Elizabeth's talk will be uh, shown on Thursday, the 29th. Uh, every day there's new content available uh, at midday, uh, so please check it out. There's talks um, by Dr. Baquedano, uh, but also actually by uh, David uh, Martinez um, with Rafael Flores, for example, they their talk uh, will be shown tomorrow. Uh, so do check it out. Uh, we're very glad to to provide a space uh, to collaborate with different British and Mexican organizations, musicians. There's concerts. There's workshops. There's a do-it-yourself um, altar because we also um, included a contest, uh, an altars competition. Um, and we're, we're all collaborating to make sure that the occasion doesn't pass. Um, and also, perhaps it will be interesting for you to know that in addition to the actual festival where, as I said, there's 30 activities, films as well, by the way, uh, in collaboration with Imcine, um, there's also an interactive altar. And um, that altar is the centerpiece of the website. And it's a digital piece uh, that the artist that we commissioned, Rodrigo Nava, created. And Rodrigo is a, a UK-based artist um, in Glasgow, and he created that piece. So basically, it's an altar, and each of the elements that Elizabeth explained uh, so wisely in this um, talk, you can see it. And the idea is that even kids or anyone can see that information and just 
interact with it. There's also a map uh, where you can see the way that the Day of the Dead is celebrated throughout Mexico. There's a whole discussion on who influenced who, uh, but you can find Mesquite, for example, but Janitzio Hanis as well. Yucatan, a complete different uh, way to celebrate in the Mayan area uh, and many more content. So please check it out. Thank you so much. And uh, we're always glad to collaborate with the Latin American show. So on, on behalf of the ambassador, Aurenia Aguirre, Chargé d'Affaires uh, of Mexico and the UK, thank you so much um, for being part of this festival. And do not forget, you have until the 30th of October uh, to be part of the contest. And if you forget to register, that's fine. You can still send us your pictures. And if you want to, that pictures can be shared. And let's just make the UK map more colorful. And you'll see in the website uh, a change in the map at the, in the home, um, in the beginning of the website that would change from the 5th of November to announce the winners of the competition and also all of the altars that were created in the UK. So thank you so much. Definitely, thank you very much. And of course, thank you very much to the Mexican embassy for all the support.